Hi, today I'd like to explain to you why you should move towards thinking about your instruments as being secondary to you. I mean, all your instruments should only confirm what you already know. So um, let's dive in, let's take it one at a time. Let's What does a computer or a bottom timer show us? Well, a lot of things. Potentially, uh, a great deal of things you don't really need. But it uses us. It shows us depth. It shows us time, average depth, and when, in in case of computers, remaining bottom time, um, or obligated decompression time. Uh, if you went over the line of the bottom time remaining. How can we make it that the computer shows us something that we already know or guesstimate? Well, depth is very hard to gauge unless you know the dive site. So if you know the dive site, you know what depths wrecks are at. But time you can guesstimate right what that is uh, compared to your gas consumption. Um, but the decompression information on a dive computer, that's something you know. Or can easily learn to know. In UTD, uh, we call it ratio dego. It's a very simple way um, to come up with a strategy for your ascent. And it's all based on the tables and computers and Buhlmann and whatever that's out there. So don't worry, it's not a new algorithm or something else, something new under the sun. No, 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 it's based on all the knowledge we know. It's just a simple strategy to help you calculate it in your head instead of just trusting on a computer. Now, to give a, 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 a normal life example, um, all modern cars nowadays have these computers inside them that show your mileage, your gas mileage, and then it shows you how much gas you have left for the remaining kilometers. So my car, for example, it shows me I can drive, I don't know, 300 kilometers before I need the tank, before I need the fuel. But I still have that, you know, even though it's also digital or whatever, but I still have that normal gas gauge, you know, full, half full, empty. Uh, plus I have the odometer on my car and I can see how many kilometers have I driven. And, you know, usually we set that to zero when we have fueled up the car. So you have a lot of parameters. Plus your car is fairly consistent. All right, when there's a big load in the car, you're driving it with a trailer or you're driving uphill, there's deviations. But I mean, it's maybe from nine kilometers per liter or, or, or nine liters per kilo, per hundred kilometers to 12 liters per hundred kilometers. Um, it's very close. Um, plus you have a little guesstimate yourself. Okay, when a full tank, I can drive around about 900 kilometers. So I have a lot of information to help me decide if the information on the computer screen is correct. I can tell myself because of my knowledge that the computer is right. If I drive up a hill with the boat behind us and 10 pieces of dive, uh, 10 peoples of dive equipment back in the car, up a long hill, that computer will go down and down and down and it says to me, hey, you can only drive 200 kilometers before you have to fuel. And I know, no, 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 just relax, dude, because in a minute we'll reach the top of the hill and we'll go down again and then the number will go bigger. So when it comes to decompression information, if you have some kind of knowledge about what sounds about right at certain depths and certain times, then you're you're much more in um, able to 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 know if something's wrong. Um, I'm not saying a lot of computers show you wrong information, although it has happened in the past, and usually it's because of a user error. Um, but that way you can actually have an idea of what's right or what to expect or what to do if something fails. Uh, two examples. Um, I've dived on a wreck at 30 meters and in the first dive I used Nitrox 32. We dive down and you know we complete the dive and I just follow the directions on my dive computer when I needed to ascend. Dive number two we were diving on air 
jump in the water, go down to the wreck. I had forgotten to change my computer settings so that it was on air. It still said Nitrox 32. So about five minutes into that dive, I look at my dive computer and I notice in the corner it said 32%. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. You're calculating, calculating my dive now with the wrong information. The dive computer thinks I'm using Nitrox 32 as a gas, but in fact I was using Nitrox 21 air. At that point I had to abort the dive, because at the point I had no knowledge of Razor Digo, I had no idea on, on what to expect or how long or short the dive should be, plus the longer I would stay on that dive the more I would screw up my computer's data for my you know, next upcoming dives because it'll track my nitrogen and all that sort of stuff based on what I'm doing. So I had to abort the dive. Completely unnecessary if I didn't use a dive computer and used my brain instead. Another example is we were doing a trip to, um, to a travel destination and uh, one of my customers bought a dive computer just the same day we left. We met up in the shop in the morning to you know drive to the airport and she bought the computer. She was fiddling it around with it on the airplane all the trip down on the first dive, on a check dive to about 15 meters, 10 minutes into the dive, she comes to me and said, hey, we need to go up. I only have eight minutes left of decompression time. And I could see in her face that, that she knew that was bullocks. And when we came back to the boat, of course, I got shit for selling her a you know, crappy computer. And I was like, wait, no, no, no. The computer only shows you what you told it. So... I went into the settings and she had set it so that we were diving at altitude. She had set it so, so that it was on a conservative level of plus three. So it was completely, uh, you know, overweight, old, injured, uh, drinking, smoking, I don't know what. So it was the most conservative at the highest altitude the computer can, can keep. Ah, obviously it would show her less decompression time because you thought it was diving in the Alps or something. So that was a user error on both accounts uh, where the computer showed us something that wasn't true. Um, and I just think when you invest some time in learning ratio deco or learning how to calculate or guess or guesstimate or whatever you want to call it, your decompression time, you find that it's very accurate and you find that it's very, very satisfying when you uh, when you get a get a hold of it i mean at the beginning to be honest i was very skeptical and uh, the more i used it the more i was stubborn to you know train myself in using it i found okay wow there's absolutely no point in using a dive computer i can do this much more efficiently and i can you know adjust my decompression much much better to my needs instead of whatever computer tells me we can talk about this uh, for a long time and I think I'll do another video on this topic uh, because we hear a lot of c people that dive with dive computers, they, they put too much you know, um, emphasis on the computer. And um, But I'll, I'll, I will make another video about that because uh, uh, something to think about in the, before that video comes out is why does a Trimix computer cost so much more than a Nitrox computer? where in effect, all they do is measure time, depth, average depth, and then relate that to whatever table, whatever numbers some computer guy put in. So, if it's Nitrox or Trimix, it's just another set of numbers based on whatever table they're using. So I have no idea why a Trimix computer costs, you know, upwards of a thousand dollars, and a Nitrox computer costs two hundred dollars i have no idea um but hey something to think about but we'll make another video in which i go in a little bit more depth uh and my own personal experiences when i was you know migrating from computers because believe me i've been there all i mean i've got computers with two screens color screens transmitters the whole shebang i'm a gadget freak oh you know so i, I get you all out there that diving with dive computers but i try i i um, transgressed from diving computers to just this bottom timer. This has been with me on, you know, 90, 100 meter dives, uh, just this one. And fine, I'm still here, you know. 
So that's for, for dive computers concerned. Uh, it is also a secondary way for us to, to calculate. And the backup of a computer is your buddy. Um, a lot of people, especially when they begun, begin to dive with uh, technical diving, they, they need two dive computers. Um, but why? You know, you don't have two compasses when you're doing, you know, uh, you know, advanced navigation. Uh, I mean, it's just as critical not to come up straight into the shipping lane than it is to be able to tell what depth you are. So why not just then have two compasses either? Um, pressure gauges on a twin set. We'll come to that in a minute. We have one pressure gauge on two tanks. Why is that? Why not two? So your body is your backup instruments, your backup brain and your backup um, gas. So when my computer or bottom timer fails, I go to my body and I say, hey, my computer is broken. Um, we have to exit and we go up. Um, yeah, but if you had a backup computer, we can just continue. Yeah, we potentially could, but a backup is there to help you get out of a sticky situation, uh, not to continue to dive. It's a philosophy question, I guess, but um, that's just the way I am. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or you know, even better, share this with your buddies if they don't know about our channel yet. So um, I hope to see you out there and, uh, you know, stay sharp, guys. See ya. Gauge. I mean, it's very, oh, I'm sorry. That's the coffee machine turning off. Bear with me for a second. Every time you hear that sound, you feel like a cup of coffee. You know what I mean? They should make a, an alarm or something. They say beep five minutes before it turns off. Anyway, I digress.